do you need a Gen 4 SSD? Well, it's a little more complicated than just a simple yes or no, so let's dive into it. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now, PCIe Gen 4 SSDs are still pretty new. In fact, they only came about with the launch of AMD's third generation Ryzen CPUs and their accompanying PCIe Gen 4 supported X570 motherboards. On top of that, the drives themselves are also still pretty new in that they all use the same Fizen E16 controller, which again, in and of itself is also pretty new and pretty basic. When I mean basic, the only difference between the Fizen E16 and the last generation, I think it's the E12, is that the top bottleneck of the, the PCIe bandwidth has been doubled. So instead of having four gigabytes per second, you get eight, but the actual controller itself looks basically identical. Right now, the drives that we have today with those Fizen E16 controllers only really have the ability to go between four and five gigabytes per second. As like I said, the rest of the drive is basically identical the NAND flash is the same NAND flash you'd find on Gen 3 drives, the RAM is the same, the whole board layout is the same, the only difference, like I said, is that upper limit of how fast, in a perfectly theoretical way, the drive can be, and so in more real world applications, even taking a look at, say, the more realistic uh, 4 kilobytes Q depth of 1 kind of test, like the one in Crystal Dismark, which is a thread of one as well. Uh, you can see that the, the, the performance between one of these Gen 4 drives and a, say, Samsung 970 EVO Plus, it, actually the 970 EVO Plus beats the Gen 4 drives here by a little margin. Now what you might call sort of next generation PCIe Gen 4 drives might have a bit more performance available, and that might be across the board as well, as at least theoretically anyway, we can see anywhere from six to seven gigabytes per second in sort of real world transfer speeds. So that will be very interesting to check out when they're actually available. So why would you want a Gen 4 SSD right now? Well, if you can read and write to them in just the right way, then you can actually see a performance benefit even in real world applications. My usual stress test for SSDs when I'm doing a review to test the controller's read and write, uh, which is duplicating a fairly large 70 gig file set of mixed file sizes, saw about a 50% performance improvement going with a Gen 4 drive over Gen 3, but that's not necessarily to say that that same performance can be had across the board. With stuff like booting into Windows, that's not really affected by these sorts of faster speeds or faster sort of top end speeds. And like I showed in a recent video, neither are game loading times all that much. Of course, there are a few professional applications that can benefit from these faster drives. Video editing is probably the first one that comes to mind, especially if you're in the more VFX heavy side of things, as programs like After Effects really like having their cache stored on SSDs. And obviously the faster the SSD you can get, the better there, generally speaking. And so that can be a benefit. There are also some data center applications that can benefit from this extra uh, kind of bandwidth, but I'd mentioned these are not data center drives and it's kind of unfair to try and compare them to that or even suggest they should be in that environment. And I would also mention that these drives aren't necessarily quite as good as you might think as they're, the metrics that we're looking at, generally speaking, tend to be megabytes or gigabytes per second. But what can end up being more important is IOPS or input output operations per second. As Linus mentioned in his Threadripper 3990X review, you can actually see a big performance improvement just having a higher IOPS number rather than uh, sort of through Put number. So how does all of that relate to you? Well, if you're just gaming, then a PCIe Gen 3 SSD is pretty much all you need. A great option would actually be something like this WD SN500 Blue Drive, which while not the fastest, does provide an excellent value for money, and honestly is a, is a perfect fit for most systems, unless you need a bit more uh, storage capacity and then there are a few other options. Feel free to check out my other reviews at the end. But otherwise, if you are also, say, video editing as well, then a faster Gen 3 drive like, uh, say, Samsung 970 EVO Plus or ADATA SX8200 or even the WD SN750 Black Drive are all great options. And finally, if you already have a third gen Ryzen CPU and an X570 motherboard, and let's face it, you just want to flex on all your mates, then sure, go pick up a Gen 4 drive and enjoy the bragging rights of having the fastest SSD you can get 
right now. And of course, all of this is based on current softwares. And as time goes on, we will see applications get optimized for faster storage, especially when those sorts of, uh, sort of second generation Gen 4 drives come out with a bit better performance available to them than the current drives, especially across the board. Of course, if you're watching this in say five or 10 years, uh, one, I'm surprised the world hasn't, you know, completely ended, that's kinda cool. Two, what's PCI Gen 6 like? Let me know in the comments. Now if I've somehow managed to convince you to go pick up a PCI Gen 4 drive from this video, which honestly, not sure how, but fair enough, uh, you can check out the links in the description to the two I've reviewed personally down there. Those are Amazon affiliate links that will take you to a local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and when you watch this. If I've convinced you to not go with Gen 4 and go with Gen 3 instead, I'll also leave a couple of links to drives I reviewed in the description down below too. And otherwise that is kind of that. Like I said earlier, if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, do hit that subscribe button with the bell notification icon. You can also check out a load of other links in the description down below if you want to support me in other ways than just watching these videos. There's stuff like Amazon and Overclock GK affiliate links that don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you do use them. Or other stuff like uh, merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one, Streamlabs OBS if you want to start streaming, and Patreon if you want to get cool rewards and support me directly too. I'll also try and remember to leave the uh, reviews that I've already done for these drives in the cards up above, and hopefully even an SSD reviews playlist over there. Don't get your hopes up too much, but it might be there. And that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below, but otherwise we'll see you all in the next video.